Hello lovelies and welcome back to my channel. I'm at my desk today as you can see and I'm surrounded with piles of books because Meg at Rose Honey Ritual, Meg worked her magic again on me. I'm going to start this video with a thank you for Meg being Meg because Every time I watch her, she fills me up with enthusiasm for something new. And that's exactly what she did in her recent video, introducing me to Historathon 2023. And that is why I'm surrounded by books. So this is a book video today. It's also a little touch on depth here <laughs> because Historathon nearly sent me down a rabbit hole of consumerism and ordering books. And I thought to myself, with all the lessons of depth here, let me just check what I've got on my bookshelf, but we'll get to that later. First of all, what is Historathon 2023? Well, Meg, I fell down the rabbit hole that you laid out for me. In fact, I jumped in head first, squealing with joy. So Historathon 2023 is something new on Booktube and it's a year of reading history. So I'm a bit late to the party. So you can see January to March, it's reading books that in any topic, that you love, anything that you love, dating from prehistory to 500 AD. So that's January to March. So that's where we're at at the minute. Then April to June, it's from 500 AD to 1500 AD. So any topic, any subject matter you want, but within the history of that, those years. Then July to September is from 1500 to 1820. And then October to December is 1820 to the present era. Now, I, when I was at school, was quite clever. <laughs> and I did really well in my exams and I went on to get a bachelor's degree. I also took history at O level. Okay, so it was in the 80s. It was a long time ago, but I enjoyed history. However, when I looked at these dates and saw that some people were replacing AD with CE, I have to say I felt really thick, guys. I just thought, when's prehistory? What's 500 AD? What era are these? I had no idea. I had no timeline in my head to understand why AD was replaced with CE on some people's channels. I didn't understand the timeline. You can tell that history is absolutely not a genre that I read. And obviously any history knowledge that I had, because I couldn't even understand these basics, um, has really gone. And I had to laugh because Meg was saying, she had to keep asking friends, is this history? Is this history? And it cracked me up because it's exactly what I've been saying. So I started off, guys, doing a little research just in the timelines. So for your pleasure, and if anybody is as confused as me, I found a couple of pictures. So I don't care if I come across as being a bit thick. I was always the kid willing to put their hand up at school to ask the silly question. So the Gregorian calendar where we've got BC and AD was very Christian because it's all centred around the year that Jesus was born. So it's been changed to AD is common era or BC can be before common era. So that's why you'll see AD or CE or BC or BCE. It's just to take the religion out of it. So there you go, History Lesson 101. Can you believe I had to do that before I even started? So we've got the basics out of the way. We've got what these things are. So I thought, oh, I can order some books about history because, of course, I've got nothing on my bookshelves about history because I don't read this genre. And I, I went to order. I actually had about six books in an Amazon cart and on different bookshops, all, sec all second hand. However, I thought, no, lessons from depth here. Let's just check my bookshelves first. The amount of books just from this section 
that I already own to read. So I thought I'd share with you today my pile of possibilities. The first one, Myths, the Mammoth Book of Celtic Myths and Legends. Now, I asked myself, are myths and legends part of history? But because I am interested in magical, magical things and the magical world and the development of different magical systems, because a lot of that is fed by myth and story and of course I work with deity as well I work with Celtic deities which is it has shaped history these stories and yes although they're myths and although they're legends this for me is part of the history of magic so I have this mammoth book of Celtic myths and legends by Peter Beresford Ellis I haven't read this yet um, so you've got Ireland you've got the Isle of Man represented Scotland Wales Cornwall and Brittany one of the Celtic areas in the UK and Ireland and Brittany so so excited to read some of these so that is a possibility however that is not the only unread myth book I have on my shelves I also have the encyclopedia of Celtic myth and legend a definitive source book of magic vision and lore and this is by the infamous John and Caitlin Matthews whose work I respect such a lot so you've got invasions conceptions and births cattle raids voyages hero tales dreams and visions wisdom and lore love and longing wooings adventures feasts and visitations exiles and deaths so this is organized in a slightly different way so the layout of the book is different. Both of them, Celtic myths, of course, the, Cel the Celts, it's the pantheon I work with. So of course, that is what's going to interest me the most. And we don't stop there, oh no, no, no. Because I have a Penguin Classic unread on my bookshelf as well about early Irish myths and sagas. Of course, this links with my work with the Morrigan. You've got cattle raids in here as well. Um, the destruction of the Durgas Hostel, that's where we see um, the Morrigan in more than one guise in that story. So I do know some of these. Um, I do know some of these, but I haven't read this book yet with them all laid out. So for me, that would be part of my um, deity work and honouring, you know, one to be read in front of the altar with candles burning as an offering to the Morrigan. So that is another one that I'm really, really excited to read. Along the same vein as well, my gosh, look at this book, guys. Now this was bought at Abris with Art Centre and the book it's full of these glorious woodcuts not read it yet but it's a similar sort of vein because it's folklore so ancient stories that have been passed up to us have helped to shape magic is this prehistory to 500 AD <laughs> who knows but you know it's it's early it's the origins it's the shoulders on which magic stands so this is the treasury of folklore woodlands and forests wild gods world trees and werewolves so i know that books about werewolves might not be classed by some as history <laughs> i don't know why but there you go but for me because it's the history of how magic and magic systems have developed and the history of paganism or witchcraft you know story is a huge huge part of my pagan beliefs and my spiritual path that i'm now on on oh, i mean look at this it is just the most beautiful 
glorious book. So that's another one that I'm really, really excited to read. So that goes on my pile of possibilities, which is growing larger by the minute. Okay, now this one, I definitely, this one jumped into my mind the minute I watched Meg's video, because this one is easier to fit in. So this is the tribes of Britain. Who are we and where do we come from? Now I know Mark over at Book Time with Elvis, he had this on his list as well. So um, of course I live in England, I'm English, so this is the history of me. The tribes, um, the tribes that we came from and how Britain was organised into tribes in in ancient times so I know this one bits um, when I when I saw Mark pick this up I thought oh, yes I've definitely got one right so we've got contents like in the beginning the ancestral land Romans in Britain so Romans I know I'm in prehistory to 500 AD with the Romans new tribes the Viking legacy new Norsemen changing worlds expanding horizons departures and arrivals an industrious people leaving the city new britain so it, it just sounds fascinating i think for me studying the sheila and the gigs made me really interested in the people that came in to britain and the people that left and the way it changed sort of sites that i'm interested in the sacred sites so it seemed like a really interesting book just to get a handle on though that early early history um, again this is linked although it's a history book it's very linked to my spiritual practice so that is definitely going on the pile of possibilities and mentioning the Sheila and the gigs there of course I've got this book now this book is just fantastic you've got all the the Sheila and the gigs outlined and um, located for Britain and Ireland in the back so it's like a absolute veritable map in fact you've got maps in the front so that's where they all are in uh, the UK this is Ireland so um, this is the book that's fundamental for my adventure tarot and the quest of the Sheilas I, me and a friend have undertaken and yes we've only done two Sheilas so far but we're both single moms life is busy but you can see I have started really studying this writing all over it but I haven't finished it yet I haven't got to the end of this book even though it was a book that lived in my bag all of last year um and I do want to bring some videos to you all about what the Sheila and the gigs are, you know, what I think about them, how they've been depicted or explained throughout history, uh, as well as bringing you the Adventure Tarot videos where I visit the Sheilas. You know, I'd like to really get a firm base for my fascination with the Sheilas. So this one is definitely going on the pile of possibilities. Another book that I started reading, um, this was a charity shop find, is the Glastonbury Legends. So this goes all the way back. You can see I've got the history of Glastonbury drawn out as a map. Oh, the way that we make, <laughs> the way that we make um, images so look it started with um, in AD 63 with Joseph of Arimathea sending people across to Britain so this early history does fit um, I definitely want to go back to Glastonbury this year um, I've got to finish this book I might have to does anybody else do this do you start reading and then forget what you've read and have to restart a book yeah i do it all the time and i'd love to bring some some videos at, and updates about this study as well so that is going on the pile as well oh my gosh i've got another partly started well i've got another two 
partly started books here. One of my goals for 2023 was to do a Two Marys study, I've called it. So um, Mother Mary, who I do use in my spiritual practice, for me she's very safe grounding mother energy and has been incredibly healing to work with. Again, the fascination for that um, came from an experience in the Chalice Well Gardens in Glastonbury. So you can see a lot of these books are all kind of linked with what's going on in my spiritual practice. So this is just, you can see I've got to this point in here, no, tags as um, bookmarks. Um, so this is going back, talking about the history of shrines of Mary and you know in different places in the world. Um, I love Clarissa Pinkola Este's work um, but I'd like to finish this one also to remind myself what I've read before and then I did start reading The Quest for Mary Magdalene. So of course last year taking tarot out on Adventure Tarot I stumbled across the Nantios Cup and links to the Holy Grail in Wales where my caravan is and I had some amazing experiences last year. Um, of course that led me down the rabbit hole of Mary Magdalene who's linked with the Holy Grail in a number of ways. This book, I started reading this book um, in order to add a bit more depth to my review of Mary Magdalene Oracle deck, which I got sent. Um, haven't finished it, haven't finished this one. It was went onto my goals list for this year, study the two Marys. Both of these books, I think, would fit. Look, it says history, so there you go. On the pile, they go. On my bookshelf, I also have two books about the aforementioned Holy Grail. Um, I have this one, Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, which I found in a charity shop for a few pennies. It says the shocking international number one bestseller. So that just sounds fab. Look, it's got, it's got photos in. We love a book with old photos in. This looks like a headline stealer. This has an amazing write-up. Um, when you're looking for books about the Grail, this comes highly recommended. So this is a history of a legend. So obviously, look, you can see I'm going for history books about legends and myths. You can see I like to, I like magic. It inspires me. So the Holy Grail, the history of a legend. There are another two possibilities. Oh my gosh, Let, my pile of possibilities is now two piles of possibilities. Okay, ancient Britain, enchanted Britain in fact, mystical sites in rural England, Scotland and Wales. This is a book by Mark Alexander. This book looks amazing. Another charity shop find again with lovely pictures in it talking about the magic within the landscape of where i live so you've got here a map of the landscape of king arthur which is so exciting to read can you see kind of all ties up glastonbury the holy grail king arthur enchanted britain myths legends it's all stuff that i love um so this, I can see this taking me out of the doors on a quest again. So we've got that one. Um, oh my gosh, talking about King Arthur. We have got King Arthur's Avalon by Geoffrey Ash, uh, which again was a charity shop find, just pennies. Um, so another history of a myth or a legend. Another Geoffrey Ash book, The Discovery of King Arthur, a must have for anyone interested in the history and mythology of the British Isles. And guys, another book about King Arthur. Well, I said I wanted to finish the Hallow Quest with the Arthurian Tarot. I think reading these books might get me kick started on my Hallow Quest again. So, 
this again is another book that if you look at like what book shall I read for King Arthur studies this one comes highly highly recommended as well and this is from history to legend you can see I only paid five pounds for it so you've got the historical backing and the way that the history developed into legend so on it goes on to the piles of possibilities um what else do i have okay goddess worship which is a big part of my spiritual path here you've got goddess myths legends sacred sites and present revelation um, this is a book by Kathy Jones. Uh, this is a book all about the ancient British goddess. So again, sort of the old myths and legends and sites of how the goddesses of these isles came to be. I can imagine that this also will get me out of the door tarot deck in hand on some adventures i mean look at this that ah, oh, that is new grange i've been there i've been there and i'd love to go back and it just oh look look at it there's new grange um so rock art as well ancient rock art and i have to admit even though i've got all these books i did order one there was one i could not resist i read it and i just went busy with excitement about um, early signs and um, rock art oh my gosh um yeah prehistory rock art and because my art is so full of signs and symbols and i use lines and shape i did actually order another book i know that's insane with all of these books but there you go what can i say i love books but this one i think looks amazing so that's going on the pile oh should we talk about art well, i am talking about my art and lines because on my art bookshelves there's a lot of books that i've had since i was say a young teenager because i've always been completely fascinated with pattern and line and geometric shape um, this was a book that I bought I mean I used to live right by Hay on Wye the book town in Wales so I could cycle into Hay and I would get all my art books from the second hand shops at Hay on Wye so I have a lot of books like this that were bought as source books for my art because I was all, I've always done it right from like pre-teen um, and this book, oh my gosh, I did so many knitwear designs based on this book. It's not even funny. But I've never actually read the text. So, the Book of Cows. It, this imagery has been in my psyche and in my soul and heart, literally from like the age of 10. And uh, I've never actually read the text, so that might be interesting. You can see this is another Courtney Davis book. This is a source book. This isn't one really to read. This is more purely an art book. But you can see I've got lots of books like this that um, used to inspire my knitwear when I was a knitwear designer. Uh, so, yeah, the Book of Cows and the history of that. When I was a young 20-something living in London, and doing an art degree as well i went to see this exhibition the work of angels now this was at the british museum uh oh my gosh and i actually cried it was all the metalwork and the jewelry from ancient um from the ancient celts and all of this was on display and i can remember standing over one cabinet and being so blown away by how intricate this jewellery is that I burst into tears and the guard got up and gave me a hug and he just said I know it's amazing isn't it and again I've you have had this book for years I mean I probably would have been 20 19 20 something like that um and I've used it as a source for patterns for my art over the years but I've never actually read it so it might be nice to use this project to actually read 
read it so that's another one on the pile and also another load of resource books that I would have bought probably at about age 12 13 from look the bookshop it is the pavement hey on why um <laughs> So I would have cycled as a kid into Hay on Y looking for books to inspire my art. Oh my gosh. I'm saying oh my gosh because this picture on the back, I spent probably a month as a teenager drawing this imagery. I wonder if I've still got that drawing somewhere. If I've got it, I will share it in an update video. Um, but again, it, it's books that I've had for art resources even as a kid so I can remember doing that drawing I would have been doing a level so I wasn't even 20 I was like 17 when I bought this book and I'm 54 now so you can see how long I've had this book and I've never actually I've never actually read it so it might be nice to read it so that's the jewels of the pharaoh and likewise and one that I would have probably got on the same visit into hay is the art of the ancient near east a thames and hudson book bought for three pounds all those years ago um so again it's like art in inspiration um in fact i think this image here was the first image that got me really interested in paper making because i loved like the way it was all torn so, I mean, these books have seeped into my psyche as an artist over the years, but I've, I've always owned them, like I say, for the imagery, not for, um, not for the words. Oh, look at that. But it would be nice perhaps to read it. So that's on the pile of possibilities too. And another one. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's just so many. This is another one off the art bookshelf. The Byzantium era, again bought for the imagery, City of Gold, City of Faith, bought for £4.50 many, many years ago. And it's also full of like collected, oh my gosh, what is all of this in there? So it's got, oh look, any, any imagery that I've seen. Oh, there's some music in there. What on earth? Okay, let's take that out uh yeah imagery metal work so you can see the type of imagery that i would have bought this book for and just absolutely fascinating images look at this just incredible and i would have been buying these books really to be inspired by the pattern um by color just incredible and then i had the most amazing amazing chance to visit some of these places when i went to istanbul which was just incredible really i actually walked into some of the temples that are in this book St Mark's in Venice also had the joy of going into there as well um, but it would just be lovely to to actually read about this I mean I, I went to some of the sites in Turkey I've been to some of the sites in Venice but how lovely to actually read about them rather than just using them purely visually so that's on the pile as well right the last two so botanical folk tales of britain and ireland so going right right back to where our folk magic comes from like the early beginnings of the early beginnings of plant magic um, that's going on the pile and then the book of english magic um this all the way through history so i could pro possibly read this going um throughout the year I started reading the very start of it um but that's another one as well that is going on the pile you can see i have an absolute ton of books that i could be reading for historathon am i saying i'm going to read all of those absolutely not of course i'm not 
Um, but what a lovely pile of possibilities that I wanted to share with you. Um, Which ones? I think the Marys I really want to read. Um, definitely the Sheila and the Gigs. Oh, who knows? There's just too many books and not enough time, isn't there? So, guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed it. All books today. Meg, thank you so, so much. You provided such a lovely rabbit hole for me to fall down yet again. Um, if you haven't watched Meg's channel, go along and watch it. She's just glorious to watch. Um, so, yeah, books, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Slightly different, I know. But Historathon 2023, I'll leave some links so you can find out about it too. Perhaps history might be a genre that you want to add in this year as well, like me. So thanks guys so much for watching and having a look at the books off my bookshelf that I found. Um, I'll update throughout the year as and when. I'll see you next time. Bye.